All right, welcome to Living the Dream. My guest today is stand up comedian, podcast host, psychonaut. He's been on Conan five times. He's been on Jimmy Kimmel. You may also know him from his many appearances on several other podcasts, such as The Joe Rogan Experience, WTF with Mark Marin, This Past Weekend with Theo Vaughn, The Duncan Trussell Family Hour, um, Burt Kreischer's podcast, Doug Benson's. He's one of my favorite comedians, and I could talk to him forever about his life and his experiences. Um, it was it was an honor and a privilege to have him on the show, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So please give it up for Shane Moss. You know, as, as really as good as I, I could be right now. Um, yeah, how about you? I, I hear you. Same, same. Just uh, stuck in stuck in the coordinates here and just every day is new questions and new uncertainties. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what have you been doing for the... Are quarantine? we recording already right now, by the way? Yeah, yeah we're recording, oh, okay. if, if that's cool. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I'm just... All right, I'll turn it on now. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I've been, uh, so, I mean, I was in LA when, um, when shit really started hitting the fan. So I've been, you know, I've been touring around the country uh, with the show Stand Up Science, and it's kept me so busy that I, I've been living on the road, doing about three to four cities a week all my stuff's in my vehicle and whatnot. And I, I have tons of equipment for the show and it's a half comedy, half science show. I have a science podcast called here we are. And I, um, I was at the end of February, all of a sudden I had like three shows in a row that had like half the numbers that I would have expected. And I was like, what is going on here? Cause I, I'd heard about the uh, Corona and everything. I was like, is that why people aren't coming out is this just like a weird fluke and then just shortly after that things started canceling on me and at first like people were canceling stuff for like the end of uh you know this is the end of february and people started canceling like you know i had like some private gigs stuff like that that they started canceling for the end of march and i was just like huh that's very strange and, uh, and this was in, uh, in february yeah yeah and uh mm-hmm. like way before everyone else was and i was like huh uh and then uh so so anyway then like as things got worse i was like well i still have some gigs around on the west coast yeah, okay canceling those well i still have some in like mountain time and stuff and then so i'll just hunker down in la and then like things just got more and more intense and then finally it was like i and i was like man i might be hunkered down here for a while you know i'm just staying with friends and i'm like well at the time i was like i'm gonna make the most of it and take meetings and i always love spending time in la and then and then it was just like all la restaurants are closed and i'm (laughs) like oh i gotta get the fuck out of here um because i've I've been living on i put all my stuff in storage almost a year ago uh to to focus on um really getting this live show off the ground and so it was like exciting and like what i've been planning for for years been trying to like be home free but then during a pandemic i realized oh now i'm homeless (laughs) but when, when you need to quarantine there's no such thing as being home free anymore. 
Um, and so I drove from LA back to Wisconsin, my hometown, and I'm recording this from my childhood bedroom right now. Really? So, so that's my story. Nice. That's my quarantine story. How about you? I uh, just, <laughs> I haven't been able to do much at all, really. And I mean, luckily I can do these uh, interviews remotely and stuff, but as far as like, like my kid is at his mother's house right now and they're starting to advise against split parenting and stuff like that. So it's like, they want me to not see my kid for a while. Like it's shit's getting weird, dude. It's, it's, it's getting crazy. I mean, I think, I think that everyone is going to be completely self quarantining really quick. I mean, people need to be, people need to be worried about their pets right now. You go to a dog park and you let like other people pet your dog and stuff like that. They're they're a surface. Your pets aren't going to get the disease. Uh, they they aren't going to get corona, but they're a surface. You know, just like any other surface. And so right. so then and then people, you know, you have like someone's a nurse and they quarantine themselves in like one part of the house or whatever. Well, if their cat or dog or whatever goes and cuddles with them and then goes to the other people in the house i mean this is just like people are gonna need to be so careful and uh so yeah it, it might it might be the it might ultimately be the best thing for your children and everyone's safety for uh you guys to f figure something like that out for a little while you know, know. Just, I, I, every everyone's just going to have to be um you know, really pragmatic and and uh, and figure out their differences and everything else too. In times like this, it's just I, I was talking the other day with a friend of mine about how how like divorce divorce lawyers are going to be out of work for a while. Cause <laughs> no, no one's going to get a divorce right now. But then as soon as this shit's over, everyone's getting divorced. Uh, <laughs> everyone's yeah. like, get the fuck away <laughs> from me. <laughs> that's so true i thought about that too that's so funny uh, yeah, so man, I, I, how do you think uh, we're going to come out at the other end well you know I, so i do have a science podcast but it's mostly like social sciences it's a lot of like evolutionary psychology i do talk about biology a fair amount and i do um you know, I, I talk a lot more about like the human condition and, and have, have a lot, I have a lot more of an understanding about like the hoarding and stuff like that going on than I do about, um, virology and, and, um, and the immune system. And I, and so I have been, so I, I really misjudged this thing because, um, you know, I, I, I stopped listening to the news, um, uh, years ago well, I mean once Trump got elected I was just done and I, I didn't like it before that and then um, and, and then it's just you know it's always been it doesn't matter what channel you're listening to it's always been alarmist um, ratings driven stuff usually usually making way too much of statistical anomalies like a, a shark attack or something like that happens and now everyone's like oh my god we can't go in the ocean anymore meanwhile right. actually just swimming in the ocean is pretty dangerous compared to actually like getting eaten by a shark like drowning <laughs> is a is a concern and then also the drive to the beach is way more dangerous than the chance of and so so just just knowing knowing that that's human's nature of what what the kind of stuff that causes panic and knowing that the that the news um you know it's, it's not like some conspiracy they're just giving people exactly what they want and uh it's ratings driven and so knowing that you know it's just like we've we've cried wolf on the alarms for way too long we had uh a, you know we had a, every like terrorist that the threat was the end of the world every every time someone said something politically incorrect it was the end of the world you know both both parties were doing this everyone's been doing this sounding every alarm that there is and yelling the loudest at everything and it it and it desensitized all of us and now a real threat happened 
and uh, and people still aren't taking it seriously enough. And um, you know, I think I think this is going to be um, you know this is going to be a, a a huge depression. I mean, mm. I it might be I don't know. Uh, is it going to be bigger than the Great Depression? Yeah, you know, I don't. I, I'm I'm not a I'm not a modern historian. I I know I know a lot of evolution stuff. I I know that I know that um, there's been many times in human history where plagues of uh, and things have wiped out like a quarter of the Earth's human population. I don't think that's going to happen to us. Um, that you know that that was that was back that was back when people were were still. Um, thinking like evil spirits were causing disease and stuff and and like uh, much much like uh, much like some cultures thought the cure for AIDS was having sex with a virgin I, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people were uh, during these plagues were like maybe if we spit in each other's eyes that'll <laughs> that'll <laughs> that'll fix I it mean, so worth a try yeah so I mean I think I think we're in better shape um in in that regard um but this is going to have you know significant economic impacts um that are going to be long lasting i think it'll be a catalyst for a lot of positive change as well a lot of people should have already been working remotely and and the only reason we uh, you know they should have been doing that 20 years ago 10 20 years ago and the only reason that they weren't was just because of uh you know his, uh, the uh, historical companies, historical legacies of like, well, this is the way that we've always done it. So this is how we're going to keep on, on doing it. And, right. um, and now when people might be able to work more effectively remotely is what, is what we're all going to uh, find out. I bet if I had to guess. And um, because now people are able to, um, you know, take breaks when they actually need them rather than being stuck at a cubicle and like trying to not get caught playing solitaire. People right. are actually going to work more effectively and take breaks and everything else. That's cutting down the amount of, of driving and carbon footprint that, that we're going to have, you know, say sales reps aren't going to have to be flying around. We're going to learn quickly that sales reps aren't going to have to like fly all around the country and all over the world to wine and dine um, clients and everything else. Um, when, when this can all be done remotely, um, you know, the skies are clearer, the water is cleaner. Um, it'll take a long time for the environment to recover, but this is, um, you know, the glo global, uh, once once all this is said and done, hopefully we'll be able to have a, a more intelligent conversation about global warming and the human condition. And also, hopefully people will stop having, I'm sorry, I know you have kids, but hopefully people will stop having kids. Um, so, uh, oh, <laughs> willy nilly. I mean, I, th I think this is, I think this is going to, I mean, I, mean uh, I, I don't know how old you were when when you had kids, but I, I think this will at least push back the age that people are having kids and people will make sure that they have a little more, uh, you know, resources and things like that um, together before, before they start having more. I think people are going to be putting a lot more planning into their parenthood um, than, than they, uh, than they ever were in the past. And that will have a, yeah. that will have a <clears throat> significant um, increase on, on um, making sure that we're pumping the brakes on driving off the cliff that a lot of people think that humanity has been on and and every every species every species that's had a that's had a rise like this in in all of our history they have a peak capacity where where there's exponential growth you know some new species finds some new environment where it has like no natural predators and it can just eat and consume everything and then it eats and consumes everything and right. and has a bunch of babies and then it eventually runs out of resources or a disease or something happens and then and then there's a huge huge drop off so hopefully hopefully we don't have a dramatic um drop off in, in population i don't know hospitals are going to be overrun 
Um, and then doctors and, and nurses, you know, some, some of the, uh, some of the most important people in our society today, they're all, they're going to be getting sick. They're going to, you know, some, a lot of, a lot of great doctors and nurses are, are going to die. Um, that's going to make it hard to keep people's population healthier. And, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, you know, it's a scary time. It's, it's, it's time that we all have a, uh, have a real pragmatic uh look at it think of creative solutions and think as critically as we ever have and i'm i'm like uh, I'll, I'll tell you there's a lot of people online that are still just like we got to stay positive I'm like I'm <laughs> sure i'm not sure we do, <laughs> maybe, actually maybe just be a little more realistic uh, yeah yeah so i don't know yeah realism is a little more effective than optimism i guess and like like you were saying, like we hunt to control wildlife populations, but we have no natural predators for ourselves except yeah. these viruses and potential and pandemics. ourselves, I mean. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Blowing ourselves up and stuff after we wiped off every, every, uh, humans, humans drove every large mammal to extinction other than the, the few in Africa that evolved alongside us and, and evolved to be skittish um, and, and realize how dangerous humans were. But outside of that, every new area that humans went into, we, we absolutely decimated and they went extinct uh, pretty much uh, as soon as humans uh, showed up. And then after we drove every, every large mammal to extinction, we started... <laughs> We started creating war <laughs> to wipe ourselves. <laughs> uh, so we're just built to be amazing. Uh, we're, we're, we are, uh, you know, we, we have the capability of great co cooperation, but then we, we, we can take aggression to new levels as well. So I don't know how this is all going to pan out with a, with a insane um, uh, wannabe dictator. Um, mm. trying to pick fights with other countries and call things a Chinese virus and stuff like that. Just this is this is scarier than a few years ago when this idiot was was taunting North Korea and saying uh, call, uh, calling names like Little Rocket Man and stuff. And we just know this is this is what he does, and he's he is still somehow the most powerful man in in the world. And and uh, and so you know all all of this is. Uh, a time for reflection. Right. So, um, ho hopefully, people will vote a little, a little wiser in the future. If how do you think alive. this will affect? How do you think it'll affect the the election? Well, there's going to be a lot of um, elderly that are going to die, um, so that's not good for Trump's numbers. Um, but when when people are weak and fa fragile, they tend to vote more conservatively. Um, that's uh, you, you can there. There's a bunch of studies of embodied consciousness where, where um, uh, you 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 take a you take like a rotten egg smell. You, you have a you have a control group, and you have and then you have a different room, an experimental group, and in the experimental room you have a rotten egg smell. But you're giving both groups the same um, survey on social issues. Like, how do you feel about affirmative action? How do you feel about um, homosexuality? Um, uh, you know that 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 sort of that sort of stuff. And people in the rotten egg um, smell condition um, vote more um, conservatively. Um, they're more against affirmative action, more against gay marriage. Basically, more against anything new, anything different. It primes. Um, uh, any threats to the immune system prime um, uh, psychological um, outgroup biases. The the kind of uh, the kind of reasoning behind this is is that um, is is that um, w when the immune system is triggered and on high alert, um, it's basically the immune system's going like, okay, let's just take care of every threat that's in the immediate environment that we're in right now. We got our hands full with that. So let's just hunker down. Let's not go to any other new environment um, because there's potential um, threat of disease there. And then this gets expounded into ideas too. So, so then you're going to be psychologically primed to, to be against any 
any outsiders to not want to move, to not want to travel, to not want to go to new places, to not want to even share new ideas. And so that, that's, that, that's going to lead people to being um, more, uh, more conservative. Conser conservatism and, or uh, liberalism is, is predicted by um, this psychedelic, or psychedelic, what am I talking about? Um, psych psychological um, uh, personality trait called, um, uh, called openness. Uh, there, there's these five, these big five personality traits that scientists use: conscientiousness, agreeableness, uh, extroversion, neuroticism, and openness. And openness is openness to new experience. And so, if you're high in openness, um, you're probably going to be more democratic. If you're low in openness, you're going to be you're going to vote more conservatively. And um, and being sick makes you lower in openness um so you know and and, and this, this is this is why republicans are always you know uh, trying to fire up the big war machine around election time and and trigger that threat response because they'll get a lot more votes um that way so so you know i i mean i think i think trump's approval ratings are still quite high it was uh, like you know Unfucking believable to me, but um, <laughs> you know I'm a Democrat, so I I guess I I can't uh, um, I I'm not even you know I I'm just uh, someone who believes in science and and right. um, and facts, so I guess that makes me like politically biased, um, but um, but yeah I I mean I think that uh, you know I think that the same people that are being harmed by these practices, by cutting healthcare and everything else, that's only going to make them vote more um, for that. And then we're in, you know, we we're talking about a bunch of, you know, I, I was, uh, uh, Trump supporters are like, you know, I'm back in Wisconsin, this is like my extended family. Trump supporters, you know, a lot of them are a bunch of people that have been praising God, you know, this space dictator for for um for for everything good that happens in their life and then everything bad that happens in their life that's that's like human's fault or it's it's because someone was sinning or because of the different people or the non-believers or the the minorities and and so all uh, god god doesn't get any of the blame for any of the bad stuff only gets the credit for the good stuff and so they just have that with any so you know a lot of these same people um that that are treating uh donald trump like he's the messiah are uh are kind of uh giving him the same the same treatment so it's only the worst job he does the more they're gonna like him it's weird so, how which that is, that's an works. enviable position to be <laughs> in what what a job to have but yeah i mean it's like it, it, it's it's but watching him give speeches, which I can barely um, stand uh, to do, and I, I I don't. But watching him give speeches when when we when we need a leader the most is uh, is um, absolutely uh, you know horrifying. It's um, to, to see to see him standing up next to like a doctor or scientist and hearing hearing like a professional and expert talk. And then having him then just like start trying to rant about how good of a job he's doing and fake news. And it's, it's unbelievable. One, one of my favorite parts so far was, was some clever, um, uh, I, one of the times I tuned in, I'm, I'm surprised this didn't make the highlight reel, but one, one clever journalist set him up perfectly knew it, knowing exactly what he's going to respond was like one out of 10 how would you rate your response to this crisis so far <laughs> and of, of course because he's the dumbest most <laughs> egomaniac fucking child the world has ever seen just a bratty little four-year-old man child <laughs> He goes, oh, I'd give myself a 10 out of 10. I mean, just like set him up Perfect. perfectly. It was, 
uh, it was uh, it was unbelievable. But um, but yeah, so so you know, this is a good time. I, I think we've been too nice uh, for too long about all this stuff, and this is this is the world um, uh, that that Donald Trump has asked for, uh, where where people are people you know uh, um and and his supporters they they say that people are too politically correct so i think we should be less politically correct and talk about what a piece of shit uh the president of the united states is and hopefully uh he'll be out of there very soon um so uh so yeah so that's how <laughs> i feel about things i read today somebody said watching him give a speech is like watching the kid that didn't read the book, give his presentation on the book report. Yeah. And it's so true. Like he just gets up there and stutters through these, he's got the best words. He knows all the words and it's just, he just fumbles through these, these speeches. I can't believe he's still trying to improvise. That's hilarious. <laughs> Everyone must be just like pulling their hair out. Like we wrote, just read the thing we wrote for you. God. I feel like he can't did you, see. Did you see the one where the doctor was like at the podium and yeah. then he's like, I have a question for you. All these empty seats. <laughs> when are they going to be full, full again? Uh, you know, people want to be in here listening to me talk. When are, when can we get back to that? When can I have a big fucking audience again? <laughs> That's his main concern I know. in all of it's this. It's so crazy. It, it's, my uh, my th thing about the and uh, this is here's my tweet that i was proud of recently was as i think it's true i was just talking with a friend and i'm like it's like well uh, you know part of the problem is is people are too fucking stupid and uh think like reality tv is reality and and whatnot and so but it's it's how how like think voting for a reality TV star to be president was like voting for a Dalmatian to be fire chief. Right. And, <laughs> and now, now there's a fire and we're all bickering over how well the Dalmatian is managing the fire. It's like, well, the Dalmatian doesn't have any of the capabilities to even understand what the, that they're, that there's a the fire is going on or happening like uh, like uh, it, it's not a question of like whether like oh i wonder i wonder if he's gonna be a little more presidential or something like it's just <laughs> the dude needs to uh the dude needs to be um evacuated from uh either office or existence soon um so, or we're all going to pay a hefty price for that so but I can't, I, it'll be, you know, Trump, Trump likes parades. And so um, that'll be one, one sad thing about seeing him go is he won't get to see the parade that we're all going to have um, <laughs> uh, when, when that monster is finally rids himself from this earth. So, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the piece on Trump. So that's the Trump piece. I know it's a lot of hot takes here. No, no. Um, so, like you've been on tinfoil hat with Tripoli and stuff. Like, do you yeah. think, do you think in any way that any of this has any deeper meaning or behind the scenes? You know I, I mean, mean, other, other than just run of the mill cover up and trying to fleece everyone out of money and, uh, you know, a lot of corruption um i mean i don't i don't think that like um uh, like jewish people are shape-shifting lizard people living under the earth <laughs> controlling all of the banks or anything like that and i i i mean i think that uh, that conspiracy theories often border on uh on mental illness um but but uh yeah and, and this is not uh, one so as, as someone who's into science and science communication you know, this is a pretty exciting time because all of a sudden religious people are are into science for the first time ever. And um, and all, you know, all these people are taking notice and being like, hey, science actually has value that it can add to our lives. Um, you know, it's not it's not going to turn the 
you know, it's only emboldened the conspiracy theorists. The conspiracy theorists and and the bunker builders are like, uh, yeah, 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 you know, the, this has only made them more more sure of themselves. Um, so, and now everyone's going to have a fucking bunker and everyone's going to start being a conspiracy theorist. So I, I don't know how much that's going to help things, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, I don't, it, you know, the conspiracy theory stuff, it seems like it's getting us like more and more popular, um, these days. Um, to me, it's always seemed like a bunch of, um, fun, exciting ideas, uh, to blame, um, to blame your, your feeling of an unjust world on some like hidden thing that like only you know about and um you know i think that's pretty pretty fun for people um to think about but i i i have a lot of conspiracy friends that are basically just like you know it's it's actually kind of sad because they just didn't they they never did much with their lives and then use it as a as a way to uh to excuse um you know not 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 ever trying and and to excuse giving up on on life so i'm not a big fan of conspiracy theories my apologies if you are i know we don't know each no, other no. very well um if there's a vaccine that comes out are you going to get it mm, absolutely yeah yeah big fan of vaccines um I mean, they're the reason why we don't have polio anymore. There, uh, you know, there's there are pros and cons to everything, and and nothing's nothing's perfect. Um, you know, I'm absolutely not a big pharma um, person. I I believe in science and medicine, and then I I believe that companies can get in there and manipulate things for profit. Um, and, and, you know, that's been happening, um, for, for a long time. So we'll need to be, you know, it's hard for people to know what is trustworthy and what isn't. And it's hard for doctors to know every single thing on the market. And a lot of doctors are getting their, their information, um, about, about what some new drug does from some good looking like drug sales rep that's been uh it, you know that's hired i know some of these people that's hired because they're like really charming smooth talking people and um and you know you got to get your information from somewhere and there's a zillion i mean doctors are just i i don't know if you have any friends that are doctors but oh my god the process of becoming a doctor is just I've never understood how you can just make people work like 16 hour days and stuff and think that that's good for anyone's uh, learning and capacity, but they're, they're, they're overworked and, and overwhelmed with things when there isn't a pandemic. So I, I worry, I worry a lot for doctors and so, so, so anyway, so now we have, now we have an even more overwhelmed um, hospital and medical staff and we have a lot of businesses that are going to be looking to take advantage of these, uh, you know, situations. And, and so there, there is going to be corruption, but, but, you know, that that's a different than a conspiracy, like conspiracy people are like Alex Jones, who's now trying to sell you, um, you know, anti-corona <laughs> breath mints or right. whatever, whatever the fuck. Um, so that's what conspiracy theorists actually try to do. Um, but, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. This is like, this is, uh, you know, I don't feel myself right now. I feel like rantier than normal. I'm on edge. I'm usually a more patient person. I'm usually like more open-minded and accepting of others. And so I'm like falling for it too, where I'm feeling defensive and aggressive and, and taking things out on, on uh different people i it's just it, you know you know like the bunker builders that have been like i told you guys this shit could it could happen and you, that you're gonna need supplies like this is how i feel about science right now i i've just like lived uh you know for for 30 years i've just been 
I, I've I've been like sitting here being like, why are we why are we still talking about Noah's Ark and Adam and Eve? <laughs> um, and and no one would listen to me. And now I'm like, aha, see? And now you're realizing that this stuff is actually important to uh yeah. to hear about. Yeah, it is a I weird feeling. Like it's like an invisible monster that's just kind of could be anywhere for two weeks unnoticed. And like, I've noticed myself looking at my family even differently. Like even when my son's here, it's like, do I have this already? Am I yeah. putting, am I putting him in danger by just being around him? And it I just know. makes, you can't be present. It's hard to be present and hard to be uh, just any, it's just a weird feeling to look at people even when they're close to you looking at them distantly. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I've had people like get within six feet of me recently that I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) Don't you know the rules? I mean, it's, it's not, it's not just about, you know, a person not, not getting sick. It's about, you know, if any one of us gets sick, any one of us can get a whole lot of other people sick and we just, right. we just have to end this thing um, as fast as possible. And I'm not optimistic that, you know, this two week quarantine, there's no way it's going to be just two weeks. There's just, there's just no way it's going to, it's no. going to be at least a month. We're oh, going to yeah, be minimum. shut down through, through April. I think we're going to be shut down through May and, uh, May, maybe you know i think i think we'll start reevaluating things by may yeah if we took all of our resources if we if we shut down all if we if we cut off all military contracts of like us um you know, you know we we need we're going to need um you know troops on the ground and stuff like that and as many you know as as many resources as possible helping because we're going to need to like build new hospitals and stuff like that we're going to need that but we, you know we're, we're going to need, need to stop building tanks and planes and stuff right that just go into storage and we never even get trained with um anyway because it's just part of contracts that's that's something like 50 percent of our our tax money we need to shut all that off immediately we need to end the drug war we need to end the fd uh, the the not the fda the fda is good the dea uh things like that that are just these unnecessary things that were just you know founded because of misguided ideas in the first place um guess what people get to do whatever recreational drug they want to no we're hunkered down like uh (laughs) uh, we're we're no longer spending money on that shut shut all shut all of that down put all of it into research for this thing and they'll find they'll find i i'm i'm confident that they can figure out um if not a vaccine some much 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 better testing kits if we had if we had abundant immediate testing kits you could get tested you could test your children you could test your um your uh baby's mama however whatever you refer to (laughs) um and uh your your ex and you know you could be testing all of the time and and then you would know right And and then and then we could have contact we could have like more limited physical con which we're gonna need we're gonna need physical contact with our with our friends and with our family and and um and start having normal social lives again because that's also that that's also protective for our immune system (laughs) and us isolating ourselves like this is going to be really hard on everyone's health um too which is going to create more problems just going to more overwhelm the hospitals which is going to lead to more spreading of this thing so we we need we need all hands on deck uh we need to hand everything over to the just put scientists in charge of everything for the time being um have have people like donald trump and the politicians all all the politicians um you know just kind of step aside and and let actual experts take over um right now um you you know like if if this is uh if if this is um you know if this is an actual like military war 
that that was happening um you think like you think any any general would be sitting there trying to get like a bunch of advice from donald trump on on what to do like <laughs> no of course not no. might have some protocols they got to run run by them but why why would you have that guy in charge of anything and so so that's what's you know that that's the the scientists are on the front lines of of treating this um so we need to give them all of the resources and um and as as much control over this as as uh as possible mm. uh, i've been i've been talking with scientists for five and a half years and they're a bunch of great people trying to make the world a better place and just to all of their research just falling on deaf ears and no one and no one giving a shit um and that's that's going to need to end meanwhile churches are still filling of course <laughs> <laughs> they, like the common sense wasn't there before the pandemic so yeah why why would that change i i called i called yeah have you ever seen those billboards eight eight for truth um nope there are like all over the country that's like jesus can save you call this number and hear the truth <laughs> so i called the other day um i'd always wanted to and i was just like yeah you know, i wasn't I, I was like hey i'm not I'm like just curious what you guys do. Like I'm not a religious person, but I'm not. Uh, I'm also like I'm not prank calling you. I'm just like general, generally curious. And like if you don't have time to talk to me and you got like other, if you're overwhelmed or whatever, that's that's totally fine. Um, but I just wanted to have a conversation with you. And this guy had this hour long conversation with me, and I had him explaining his belief and and his and I I was like, well, what's the religious take on what's happening? with this and he's like well what i've been telling people so this is this is and this is a reasonable sounding person this this is this is like the the i bet i bet this billboard is the most popular billboard in all of america in terms of uh like any religious billboard or something so this is this is people that are looking for answers they're calling and talking to someone like this and this person says um the reason why we're having this virus is the same reason for all of suffering. It's because Adam and Eve sinned. And since that time, all humans have been sinners and we're all paying for it. And none of us are free from sin. And uh, in the book of Revelations, it says that, um, uh, that God's going to come back um, to, uh, to destroy all of us sinners and us true believers in Jesus will get to go to the new perfect world that God has made for us. So, and, and he said, so I'm excited right now. We're talking about people that are excited, that think they're, that, that actually think that they're doing the Lord's work by getting together, not I I ignoring all of science, getting themselves and others infected. They believe this is, part of the divine plan that they're helping by uh by doing this and it just it needs it needs to end now like uh, uh, enough's enough's enough it was like it was fun and cute and we had to pretend <laughs> like noah's ark was oh, okay well they're nice people so we just let them right. they everyone has their beliefs oh, sorry we don't we can't do that anymore there there's too there's too many lives at risk to uh to have a bunch of people uh being like well i'm just gonna shoot shoot wishes into space and see if that see if that fixes everything um so so you know this is uh this this is this is a time for critical thinking um <laughs> for for everybody myself included i i mean i i'm a fucking uh i misjudged this thing every step of the way and i've made so many fucking hor horrible like regrettable decisions in life i don't <laughs> i don't have i don't you know i wasn't i wasn't prepared for this i i wasn't right. uh i i haven't taken life seriously enough and um and and now i'm i'm paying it for it too so you know i think we all need to uh take a step back from ourselves figure out 
what reality actually is, figure out how we can actually improve our ourselves and the lives of others and um, and uh, just be more pragmatic um, about it. So what would you change? Like what, what do you regret and what are you? Well, I'd have a savings account. Um, (laughs) So I was, my thing, my thing was, I was like, you know, I never understood where someone like myself would invest in the stock market or something, which that's good. I'm glad that I didn't have money in stocks, but, um, but I always was like, I'm a business. I'm just going to keep on investing in my, in my business. Um, and you know, as this show's taking off for me, this live touring show is taking off for me. Um, I'm just going to keep on dumping more and more resources into this, uh, into this show and, and build it. And I'm going to take on a full-time assistant and I'm going to get a social media ads person and a PR person. And, uh, I'm, I'm going to get my podcast editor doing more things. I'm going to collaborate with these artists and expand and expand and expand. And the whole time I wasn't, I wasn't setting aside like any, any backup plan, any nest egg. I was, I was, and you could ask my assistant, I said all the time, I'm like, just so you know, we're both gambling right now. Like all of this is, this is like the rug can get pulled out anytime. There's things that happen that, that you cannot be, you, you can't expect and that can end any everything at any moment and we need to figure out ways of being ready for that and i'm not ready for it right now this is uh this is a black swan uh you know are you familiar with the idea of, of black swans um, yeah, explain explain it for us yeah it's, it's it's just that you know every everyone uh everyone thought there was only white swans and as far as uh as far as anyone knew there was only white swans until until everyone discovered that there that black swans existed as well and then you had to and before that time no one could imagine that there was such a thing as a black swan but then you need to reassess uh life from that so so the comparison is that is that there's all these things that happen in the market and and with technology and with diseases and everything else these problems arise and uh, and and new opportunities arise that are just abs- just unthinkable like you just can't prepare for them and so the idea is 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 that you need to expect uh, be prepared to expect the unexpected so that when when something like this happens you're ready to be flexible and make changes and and make the most out of these situations um you know like i said this is this could be like a real catalyst for change for people we could all we could all take this like okay this is this unexpected horrible event we could all take this as a tremendous opportunity to um to like better our lives and better society and make a bunch of changes that that we should have made 10 20 years ago but we didn't have to now now we're going to have to so let's take advantage of that that's the idea anyway am i doing that i'm trying to i'm trying right. to by adjusting every single thing that i do and going from 95 percent of my income has been live touring well now that's a thing that doesn't exist for a while and right. um and making it making adjustments and we're all going to have to make major adjustments just like my life has been completely flipped upside down in terms of how i get my income there's a whole lot of people in way worse shape uh than than i am and i i mean i do i'm not for wish thinking but i i certainly do hope the best for for everybody um no no matter what uh no matter what their uh like political or whatever beliefs are but this is a man this is this is going to be really tough for a lot of people and and there's there's going to be a lot of things that are like you know for a long time i've been like like, you know have i i I did a lot of factory work 
growing up and it's like as factory work is going away people are like oh it's the mexicans or something like that taking our factory work it's like no it's it's modernity it's technology like factory work's just not really going to exist much um in the future it's maybe going to have a little boost right now um but you know the robots are taking over um uh, the and, and so then like what do you do you get a fast food job well fast food is going to be vending machines pretty soon you know that's that's all going to be automated there's going to be like one person there, there's going to be one it guy uh you know in each like mcdonald's or whatever making making sure that to like uh you know uh, unplug it and plug it back in when something <laughs> when something goes wrong and other than that you're going to have this hyper sterile hyper hyper efficient um you know food processing thing so then what do we do once we have self-driving cars and you know depending on the area something like 40 percent of 40 percent of occupations are 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 i don't quote me on that number but some very high percentage of occupation is uh you know transportation industry between all the shipping trucks between people ubering and and just everything else how does that change the landscape that's a lot of other people out of work there's going to be a lot of jobs created with like you know um in the in the healthcare industry probably in, in particular but um e even some of those jobs are going to go away uh, a ai is able to diagnose some like lung cancers and stuff better than a team of uh, than a team of doctors is able to so and we're going to yeah. think about how much we need to work how much we're expecting ourselves to work what full-time employment is it might only be 30 hours a week rather than 40. to me that's progress but you know at, at the at the moment um at the moment you know it's scary as fuck people are depending <laughs> on their income the system that we have in place is that everyone works their fucking ass off to live paycheck to paycheck and now there's no more paychecks and so we're gonna have to figure it out yeah it's weird are you doing anything that you would be do doing in your normal life like are you trying to stay on a similar routine are you still experimenting with things to help in your writing process like what's going on with you <laughs> am i still doing psychedelics yeah um quarantine trips i've done uh, i haven't done a quarantine trip yet I've, I've done a little bit of ketamine ketamine's so fucking weird though that right i mean I mean, a lot of people argue that it's not even a psychedelic. It's, it's you know, it's just a disassociative. Uh, I mean, it's still psychedelic enough. Yeah, you're splitting my, hairs. I, yeah, you're splitting the hairs a little bit. You know, people say the same thing about MDMA, which I, I kind of agree with. I, I'd say MDMA is barely a psychedelic. Right. But, um, but ketamine is certainly very trippy. Um, and... Uh, um, but yeah, I have, uh, I have some 2CB I'm going to get into soon. Kind of looking forward to that. I'm a little worried to do mushrooms right now. Um, mushroom, mushrooms can make me manic and I'm already a little bit, um, I'm a little manic right now as right. is I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I will say I'm the most creative I've been in, in some time. I'm oh, running yeah? with energy and, uh, and I'm very, very motivated. Um, and I'm, uh, but I'm working, I'm working very, very long days. I'm, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do my podcast once a day and do a specific um, Corona related um, researchers uh, on, on each show or pandemic related researchers, not, not, um, not necessarily Corona related, um, to, just in terms of everything, how this is going to change the infrastructure stuff like that i've done two episodes so far and have another one coming up today so it's it's changing my um it's changing my work life um tremendously i miss i miss my drives um sorry for the carbon footprint but i've i've constructed a life for myself where where i um 
you know, drive from city to city and I have like three hour drives, um, three or four times a week. And, uh, and those drives are like my happy place. They're when I'm my most relaxed They're when I'm my most creative. And, um, and so I, I miss those, but, uh, we all need to make sacrifices and that's a pretty small one. Um, I need to start exercising, but other than that, I, I quit, um, I quit. Uh, I think I'll be able to start exercising. Okay, I'm, I'm taking it easy on myself. I'm very, I'm very productive and in good spirits. Consi- all things considered, I quit smoking cigarettes, which I go, I go on and off of of uh, cigarettes. But when I quit, I quit. I quit for like a few years, and right. then I go like, oh, I can have like one or two <laughs> at a party, and then I'll and then I'll have one or two, and then I'm like, oh no, I I need all the cigarettes, and so I, right. It's been like nine months that I I was back smoking again, um, and I was trying to quit, and finally I was just like, oh well, you simply cannot have any respiratory issues right, right now. This is good not call. a good time to have a uh, have a smoker's cough, and <laughs> uh, and so so I was like, enough's enough, you know, and um, and I I haven't so I haven't had a cigarette in like nine days or something like that and i'm well well past the uh you know the any physical um withdrawal and discomfort so that's great um i i i haven't uh i'm not not that i'm quitting drinking necessarily but i haven't had a drink in um since i since i got back home and have have quarantined and so you know making making some small Actually, those are quite large health improvements, and then ho- hoping to make a lot of smaller ones with doing yoga and stuff. And but um, productivity and and creatively, I've never been I've never been more on top of my game. I hope I don't get burnt out because I'm working about 14 hour days right now, and still <laughs> forgetting I'm not supposed to touch my eye. But um, <laughs> but I'm in uh, you know I'm in quarantine. I'm I'm in a room. I basically there's a bathroom outside of it and I basically haven't left this this room and uh, other than to go to the bathroom um uh for um for like about a week now. So um yeah, it's uh it's it's also cold and I hate the cold I'm in Wisconsin right now. And so I should get outside and do some walks and stuff like that, but I just don't feel like it and I have a lot on my plate. Right. Uh, how about you? What are you up to? Well, I'm in Canada in like a small town, so there's not not a lot of population. There's not a lot going on, so it's it's kind of easy to get out and go for a walk or go for a drive. I got the woods behind my house, so I can go for go for a walk back there, and you can kind of get away with things like that, right? But like, mm-hmm. as far as going for a hike inward or anything like that i don't think when they when they recommend set and setting i don't think pandemic quarantine's a a good start for things like that right yeah so none of that going on really but that's why i was interested to hear from you like if if the state of the world affects the mindset or if like any negative impacts and things like that for for psychedelics yeah yeah, I'd say this isn't the best set and setting. Probably not. I, I mean, I w- I wouldn't tell anyone to do or to not do anything, really. Um, I guess it's just, you know, you know, maybe if I did some MDMA right now, maybe it would like calm me down. It usually, you know, MDMA has helped me like forgive the people in my life that I'm frustrated with because they are like voting dangerously uh, and things like that. Uh, So it makes me like more forgiving and understanding. Um, So maybe doing a little bit of that would be helpful. I, I usually use mushrooms for creativity. I don't, I don't need to be creative right now. I'm, I'm, I don't need to be any more creative than I already am. Um, So this is 
uh, mu- mushrooms are good for me when I'm in a drought, you know, sometimes, sometimes like a week, two weeks, a month goes by and I haven't had a, I haven't had like a single decent idea or like a new thought or like a decent joke idea I'm happy with or an idea for a project or anything. And that's when I normally um, turn to mushrooms. And right now I have more ideas and, and things than I, than I could possibly ever do or keep up with. So I'm probably staying away from that. DMT I've been thinking about doing. Uh, right. I haven't done DMT in like three years. Um, I haven't done a breakthrough. I, I microdose DMT sometimes. Um, but yeah, part of me is I want to get in there and see see what the new worlds of DMT have to <laughs> offer for me. I imagine there's I imagine there's been a lot of construction. Going, <laughs> going out in hyperspace since I last visited. So it would be interesting to take a peek around. That's but um, I mean, I mean, you know, you're in a situation where, you know, someone asked me the other day, like, because uh, I posted like, hey, get out. Now's a good time to go picking mushrooms or something like that, um, which I was just kind of making a silly post but someone someone wrote me and asked me like what a, what my what my best condition is um for uh for doing mushrooms and it really is it resembles this quite a bit and i you know my ideal mushroom setting is at a time when i can both be outside and inside and like be you know i can either be in nature And then also, you know, like a cabin in the woods is nice if I can like go outside and look at trees and then, but then if I want to be inside, I can like chill out on a couch too and watch Animal Planet or whatever. And I, most of the mushroom trips that I've had in my life have been by myself. And those are, those are usually my, my favorite ones, not, not necessarily with other people, um, although those can be fun as well. So so for me, it is like, um, I mean, the psychedelic experience is is a pretty individual solo journey, no matter what, even if you are with people, you know, like, right. yeah. no one, no one's going to relate to exactly what's going on in your head. So I'm, I am pro um, for myself tripping by myself. Now, uh, I mean, people that are less experienced, the downside is if you start getting anxious and panicky, and then you get confused and and you don't know what to do, and you don't have a trip sitter, you know, that could be not the best experience um, of your life. So I, I'm, I, I would be, I would be reluctant to advise anyone to um, trip at these times. But at the same time, um, we're going to need to be as flexible and creative as we've ever been. And psychedelics are, are, are the single greatest uh, catalyst for creativity and mental flexibility that uh that i've certainly ever come across other than uh pandemic turns out ter- turns out pandemics make me very creative <laughs> make me so reassess you, a lot of things are you working on stand-up a lot or is it mostly podcast focused i have a. Uh, i'm working on a web series um uh that uh that is hopefully hopefully going to be out really soon i have i have a bunch of um pandemic related podcasts that are coming out i'm trying to do about one a day um and then i have i have a couple other of uh um separate here we are podcasts that i don't want to say just yet but within uh within a week or so i i'm going to be putting out i have um I have uh, two different books that I had been tinkering with over the last couple of years, and and didn't have the time with being on the road. Uh, to and I've I've been collaborating with some people and getting a bunch of writing done on uh, on those. And so, you know, when I um, I want to, I I think that people are going to need and want science now more than ever and i want to make sure that when um when one i can get as much content out to people as possible and in a 
fun and entertaining and interesting way. And then two, once I can live tour again, that I'm positioned to um, make the most of it and to be able to go to as many places as possible um, and uh, everything else. So, so yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just hard at it. I got a, I got a million moving parts right now and um, um, really I, I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even think about it too much because now I'm just like, uh, I should get going soon. I have a <laughs> fucking zillion things I have to do today. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making the most of it as I, I hope, uh, I hope a lot of other people are as well. I, I would one one thing that I'm, one thing that I'm really confident in is, um, is to encourage people to look beyond, um, their regular Netflix, um, just run of the mill entertainment, um, distraction entertainment, find, find something a little more engaging. Um, you know, take some online courses, uh, read some books, chat with friends as much as possible. See if you can play some vis virtual board games or something with uh with friends th things where you can still be as social as possible um, um considering these things and and take up take up a couple of those hobbies that you've been putting off um forever and uh you know tr try to make the most of this and I, I i don't think um i don't think you know, sitting around passively watching, um, you know, the latest season of like Better Call Saul or whatever. I say that because it's a fantastic show that I can't <laughs> wait to watch. But, um, but uh, I, I don't, I don't think the reason why I haven't watched it is because I don't think that's going to do me any good right now, and I don't think that's ult ultimately going to um, going to improve my or anyone else's um, life, and so. You know we're we're in this for the long haul, so everyone's gonna get um, a little bit of a time to, you know, just wait wait things out a little bit, and now and then we're going to have to think think beyond just waiting it out because we're gonna be we're gonna have to think about how how to um, you know exist in this in this new world. This is this is not gonna be a two week long quarantine. This is gonna be. This is going to be a really long haul um, for people, and we need to figure out what we can do, and and what and what people can do. I mean, I should look into, um, you know, one thing I should look into now that I'm settled and thinking about it is is you know like giving blood and and you know doing any doing anything like that when when it's an appropriate time and there's safe conditions and everything. I would, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff like that, that people, that people can do, um, to do, to do a little bit of good because there's the people that need it the most right now are also, you know, that's like the biggest, the biggest threat too. you know, if you, if, if we, if we don't help people that need it the most right now, then we're, we all we're all going to fall. Um, you know, uh, the, the people in the worst shape are going to, are going to be the most susceptible to getting this. They're going to be the ones spreading it the most. It's only going to create more and more issues. So we're all going to have to, uh, figure out ways of helping one another out. And hopefully this president will die really soon. And, um, and we can, uh, we can all start. Uh, uh, we can all close that ridiculous chapter in human history and start and start moving forward. So, who do you hope wins the wins the election coming up? What's up? Who do you hope wins the election coming up? I don't. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not terribly excited about about anyone. I was really. I was. I. I liked Elizabeth Warren. Um, she's, uh, she, she predicted the, um, economic collapse and, uh, of, of 2008 or 2009 back, back in like 
2004, 2006. There's like, I've been a fan of her since I saw her. She was featured prominently in this, in this documentary called Maxed Out. This is before she's a politician or anything. And she was very, very impressive back then. And it was, it, this was all recorded long before all of this stuff happened and it uh, came true. And, and so, you know, I, I look to people that make accurate predictions um, and, uh, and um, I, I think, uh, I, I think people that, that can make accurate predictions about the future, I, you know, that's, that's, that's the, the measure of how we know what we know. Can, can you make accurate predictions? That's, um, uh, that's the, uh, that, that's what we need more than, more than anything. And so, yeah, I'm not, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, every, every, every candidate for president might be dead by November. Um, you know, we, we don't know. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, and I'm so it's, you wouldn't know, I'm so out of politics and the news and I, I don't, I just don't, uh, I don't, I don't value it um very much i don't i don't think we even i don't think we need a president um if there's anything that we learned from that i've been saying this for for years from long before there was trump and i liked obama but i don't i even back then i was like why do we have a president i, I don't i don't think it i don't i don't think a president actually helps like if you look at if you look at what's happening right now the pre, the president is just a big anchor dragging back uh, uh, like the uh, scientists and doctors and and people actually trying to help this, and and uh, he's holding everything uh, back. If if there was if there was no president, if he, I wish they'd just let him be in his room and read his his like reviews of himself and like and and tweet or whatever and just like keep them preoccupied with that we should get them a bunch of women too uh like like all all those all those all those women for babes for trump or whatever i think that i think let's get them those babes um i think it should be their their duty to go and and preoccupy him i think we fly those babes in Let's give them a big, a big celebratory babes for Trump harem and, and keep them preoccupied, um, with, with that and then let grownups, uh, take over this, um, this actual crisis. Yeah. Do you think there should be like a, a big board of people that have to vote on everything? Yeah, I think there should be a panel situation. I mean, I mean, people are like, well, you need one person to ultimately make the decision, do you? I mean, I don't, I don't see why. First off, how many hours a day can that do? So does the world stop when the president goes to sleep? The world keeps going when any president is sleeping. And I'm like, well, someone's got to be, someone's got to be there so you can wake them up in the middle of the night if the shit goes down and someone needs to be there to hit the button. I'm like, eh, I don't think anyone needs to be there to hit the button. And I don't think that, um, and I don't think I want someone who's groggy and just got woken up in the middle of the night to be making those kinds of decisions. I, I think it, I think it should be, yeah, I think it should be some sort of a, a panel um and uh or some sort of parliament ish situation which also also isn't perfect but uh i mean i mean right now the president's and and i think for some time the president's like been more more a mascot um than than anything and it's just a bunch of parties that are like i want that i want that to be my mascot um <laughs> And it's it's everything else, but the, and and their job is to like give a bunch of speeches and stuff. Um, and but I I don't I don't know what they're actually doing that's useful. Um, I guess there's some veto power and stuff like that. A anyway, a, a, a bunch of powers that no one person should have. Um, so so yeah, I I don't uh, 
I don't know. I'm not. I'm not uh, I I would like to see more online voting. I would I would love it if we all. I mean, if if we were all online voting for things like gay marriage, it would have been it would have been passed a long time before it actually was, and we wouldn't have had to all spend a bunch of like time and resources and and like precious cognitive energy worrying about something as silly and frivolous as who sh uh, which adult should marry which other consenting adult um and then um and then um you know uh, same same with same with drug laws if, if you if you if you put um if you put weed on an online vote right now it would be federally legalized right now it would we would get rid of the scheduling system which which the scheduling system only makes it so scientists can't study this stuff and that's all it does it doesn't stop people from doing the drugs it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't change the laws so marijuana be or psychedelics being schedule 1 it doesn't it doesn't make the penalty better or worse uh, so there's no there's no deterrent property in terms of public health use for any of these drugs all that it does is it keeps it from scientists from studying it and if people knew that everyone would vote for um weed uh, not everyone but the majority of people would vote for weed to be legalized and um and uh you know mass populace uh, if if it was a popular um vote if if everyone voted online and it was an equal say, Donald Trump wouldn't be president right now, and we'd all be in a lot better shape. Um, so I, I'm sure there would be imperfections and can be hacked and everything. But see, seems like it seems like election rigging has been going on um, through throughout the history of voting long before the internet came along. So these have always been issues. Um, so, so I, I actually, I haven't understood for years why there isn't online. It, it's, as far as I know, American Idol hasn't gotten hacked. Um, and, <laughs> and so like, you know, if some silly dumb reality TV show hasn't gotten hacked yet, um, how, how can uh, all of like the, uh, uh, the US government not create some, some safe system that allows people to all have a say on on each issue, um, because the real the real problem is, if you ask me, is like, is that say you're this party or that party, like no no one, if anyone believes all of the same beliefs of any one candidate, like they're just not thinking for themselves. I, I I've never understood why like just because you think this one way about abortion means you need to think this this one way about the economy and then you need to think this one way about child care and like straight down the line that's i belong to this party and so i'm going to just check all of these boxes automatically i belong to this other party so i'm just going to check all these boxes automatically i mean i have my best friends the people that i'm the most similar on earth i have things that i don't agree with a hundred percent of everything that they say so why why in the world are we thinking that we're going to find one representative for any of us that's going to encapsulate everything um that we want and it and it's all just uh you know this is like necessary back when you used to send a representative by horse uh to washington to be like hey tell them we need more milk and then they would and then they would ride their horse to Washington, tell them about the milk problem, go back and forth, and then come back and report. And then we'd be like, what did they say about the milk situation? <laughs> uh, you know, a few a few weeks later or whatever. And we don't live in that world that, that constructed um, the, the system that we have. It's a completely different world now. And we should take advantage of the, the modern, I, I, mean, I mean, compared to our founding fathers, we are gods. Look at us right now. Like th this is this is basically uh, uh, this is basically teleportation, <laughs> like like what of what we're doing right now. 
And like, if, if they knew that we could just Google whatever the fuck we wanted and search anything and have products delivered to our door, like, it's not like they would have constructed the same society. So this would be a good time for, for a fresh, uh, a fresh start, but it's, but it's when, um, it's, it's when, you know, there's a bunch of people saying make America great again, never was. Um, <laughs> and, and, um, uh, uh, but you know, o- old people are always like, well, the good old days, things were back better back when, back when I had, uh, 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 you know, faulty childhood memories. Um, but, <laughs> but there's, um, this is going to be a hard time to be like, we need to change everything because people are going to be against change, but we don't have a choice. So people are, people are going to have to change and adapt or die. So, you know, people are, people are either going to change or adapt or they're, or they're them and, uh, the people they, they care about are going to suffer for that. So everyone's going to have to see that now. Yeah, the system could completely be revamped. Yeah. So. Uh, and especially like you said about voting, like if this for some reason does lag on into into fall and November, then they're going to have to figure out a way for people to vote not in public. Yeah. So it yeah. Could, could lead to a new system completely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see. I think I think there's going to be a lot of good that comes out of this, but I think it's I think this is going to be a fucking horrific situation. I feel so bad for uh, for everyone. You know, I I I've never valued my own life that much uh, anyway. So you know, whatever. If I if I get sick and die, you know, I had a I had a nice run, but I'm I'm definitely I'm definitely very very worried for humanity right now. Yeah. So what's the what's the books that you're working on? Well, I do have I do have one um, that I just contributed in called Shtick to Business, even though <laughs> Shtick is the most annoying uh, word in the world for a comedian to hear. It's uh, my my friend who's a business professor, Peter McGraw. Um, he's uh, uh, he he also studies humor research. And, um, and it's like the main guy doing humor research. And so he wrote a book, it's called, it's, it's basically business lessons from the world of comedy. So how, how comedians work under constraints, how comedians think differently and creatively, what writing room practices and stuff like that. And, and how businesses can use that, those similar practices to adapt and think of new solutions and market themselves better and create better products and, um, and that, that sort of thing. Um, and, and I have a, I have a little, I have a little section like in uh, throughout each, each chapter, um, that's kind of just little, uh, little bits and pieces, um, here and there um, uh, uh, from my own personal life that are relevant to those. So that, that comes out April 1st, actually on April fool's day, I believe you can pre-order it right now. Um, but, but that's just, I, I, I didn't even get like a writing credit for that, but that's, that's, that's what got the ball rolling on like actually seeing how writing process works and being like, Oh yeah. All right. I can finally do this. So I've been scrapping together a few things. I have a children's book idea. Um, and then I have, uh, I have a, um, I, I do want to share all of my insights from my psychedelic experience and what I think it says about the mind I have. So I've, I've been working on a book kind of based on my DMT experiences and looking at things from a neuroscience angle. And, um, and then I, I have, a, I have another project that I'm working on that I'm, I'll be announcing within like a week or so. Um, but I don't want to say just yet because we're still tweaking a few things. Right. Um, so you mentioned you're going to do the DMT book, like the experiences and stuff. Are you going to include the, the, the lady in purple? Oh yeah. The purple lady. You bet. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Does she have a name? Um, no, I've always been, uh, everyone asked me that. And I'm like, God, I never got her name. That's so <laughs> me. <laughs> I am the worst with names. 
uh, no, she's always just a purple lady to me. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to include that. That's a that's an interesting. Um, it's an interesting experience that lots of people see this this uh, woman. I I actually think she's just the. I, I just think she's our inner world's idea of um, of of the perfect woman. Um, I, I think it just looks very, very different. I think we all have an idea of a perfect car, a perfect door, a perfect house, and uh, and you see a lot of these um, exemplars uh, in, in the DMT space. I, I think I think it's just a way of of um, seeing some of your more basic uh, the the um, the kind of earlier parts of your visual processing and it just looks very foreign and different um, but in my, my take on what the DMT experience is is it's kind of like the movie Inside Out you know where the girl has these Definitely. different emotional characters uh, in her head and I, I think that we have I think that those worlds that seem so alien and everything else um, to us. I think those are just our inner worlds that are happening all of the time. I think that there's a purple lady in my head right now. And it's just <laughs> that you don't, you don't normally have access um, to, uh, to those worlds unless you, unless you smoke DMT and it opens kind of the gateway into our subconscious. And I mean, scientists know that our, our consciousness is just like the tip of the iceberg and, and like a little, tiny little sliver of uh of our um perception and that the subconscious is doing you know more like a 99 percent of of what our brain's actually up to and so my take is it's that we we have a multiverse of perception inside of our minds and uh you, you know i i think that i think that when schizophrenic people are are seeing things or aliens or whatever i think they're just seeing they just have um, just kind of uh, access to different parts of their mind that other people don't. And culturally, uh, the cultural influence of, of saying that it's crazy makes them interpret it in crazy and scary, scary ways. But I think that those, those worlds are in our heads right now, uh, coming up with words for me to say out of my mouth running simulations on how I think this conversation is going to go, thinking about how people are going to perceive um, the, the words that I'm saying in this conversation and me being able to simulate how, how someone watching this might be responding. Um, you know, those, those are those as well as what I have to do today and, um, uh, and like how hungry am I right now? I, uh, all of all of those all of those worlds are are happening all at the same time and i'm i i believe that our consciousness is just what our what our subconscious is feeding us um one one at a time uh it it i i put put more simply maybe um on our on our computer right now there's a lot of there's a lot of different stuff happening all at the same time seemingly our our perception is that um is that you know i have my my email going and i'm doing this conference call right now and in this podcast and then maybe i'm uploading something and and i can click around and like go on my calculator or whatever and it seems like all of this is happening at the same time but the reality of the processing is the processing is skipping around and doing doing one thing at a time and it's but it's just doing it so quickly that it seems like all of this is happening at the same time it seems like the brain does just the opposite where where everything is actually happening at the same time in our inner world but our consciousness is just being fed one time one thing at a time so we can focus on like I can focus on this conversation now slightly better because I don't have my never ending to do list um, at the forefront of my mind, even though it's running in the background. So I think we always have these background programs running and we're just only consciously aware of, uh, of a few. And so I just think that those worlds look completely different than anyone could ever imagine. And um, it actually looks, uh, you know, can can look something like this. 
Um, and uh, this was inspired by a DMT trip. This is my podcast logo. And, and, um, and you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's just, just like in our mind's eye, we can imagine these concepts of us going out for a walk today or imagining an apocalypse happening or things getting worse or things getting better or dreaming or fantasizing all 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 of those things that are kind of like foggy that we're when we're daydreaming about them i think look just as clear as this in our actual um subconscious mind and they and they just look a little bit um different than they normally would uh, right so that's my take on it it's a fairly like deterministic take on how life plays out then eh? i guess like um, to a certain extent I, with like things are like your subconscious feeding your conscious like it's just all kind of being processed and you just kind of experience what's happening right yeah um i mean i have uh I consciousness is doing something, I think, or I don't think that we'd have it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what consciousness is doing to like steer the ship. Um, a, a lot of us, there is a lot of, um, there, there is a lot of determination. There is a lot of our internal processes and primes, you know, our environmental primes and cues and our hormones and neurons. They're, they're doing, they're doing so much that's beyond our perception and as it should be. I mean, no one, everyone, everyone really wants to be like conscious and free will, but do you really, do you want to have, do you want to have complete control over your nervous system and, and like your blood and like, okay, we need, uh, I, I need this many CCs of blood to my fingertips right now and and like would be deciding and choosing right. all of your circulatory processes all of your immune processes it'd just be impossible and it would be too overwhelming and so um a, a lot of those a lot of those tasks um we've never had to be consciously aware of so when we think about the ones that we are consciously aware of uh, there's probably some sort of feedback system that's driving like i think that we are able to feed and influence these these inner worlds i think psychedelics help the communication between our conscious and subconscious mind that communicate two different worlds or, or in two different languages where we have consciousness has all this fancy language stuff i want to exercise and then uh our subconscious has feelings that's like oh i feel motivated or i feel discouraged and that's how it communicates these uh these drives so it's speaking different um different languages and it's up to us to kind of try to interpret them better so i mean i think this is why prayer and faith has um has been such an important role because it it has um emboldened consciousness uh, conscious communication to our internal worlds quite a bit if you if you replace if you replace the word god with the word subconscious all of a sudden all of religion makes a lot more sense. So like we need to put faith in our subconscious. Uh, the subconscious knows every move we make. The subconscious is always watching. It's judging us. It's keeping track of when we were good and bad. It knows all of our secrets. Um, <laughs> you know, the, uh, uh, the subconscious is, is more powerful and more knowing than we could ever imagine. Um, you, you know, I think this is just a way of people tuning in and meditation is doing, um, is, is doing the same thing. So if we, if we eventually know that, then we can figure out how to, um, how to utilize those, those skills, um, the skills better. And, and I, I do think that we have the conscious capacity to, give kind of more clear intentions and integrate better um things things that we want our our subconscious to do because our subconscious is also working quite blindly too so i i think that i think that you know 
when we when we say reward a negative um, behavior, like say a say a say a comedian gets on stage because they're just having a little bit of fun, and um, and they always wanted to tell some jokes, and you you figure out some joke structure, and you're having a bit of fun, but then one day you're having a real rough time, and you just want to get up there and bitch about how bad your life is. And it's like the best laugh that you ever got when you're complaining about your spouse or your neighbor or your boss or whatever. And people really related to it. It was very genuine. Well, now you've just rewarded yourself for that. And then there's something in the subconscious going like, ooh, I, want, I wonder whatever, what other like vulnerable things that I can share about myself. And then you start sharing more vulnerable things and darker things. And then you get rewarded for it because no one else is doing that. And, and, um, and you seem brave or whatever. But then what happens is once you reward that enough, then your subconscious might be like, hey, I'm just going to make this person perceive all of the worst uh, in, in everything and prime them to share it because um be, because you're just rewarding that and they don't you know they're working in this digital world where they're just sending up some signal and seeing what comes back you know it's just like a trial and error and it's forming patterns so it's sending up whatever single signal which it doesn't that signal it has no idea if, if we're consciously like if it's making us happy or miserable or anything else it's just driving behavior and some of that behavior is reward and some of its pain and then it and then it's updating whether what it's going to do is that is any of this making any sense oh yeah absolutely um and and so and so knowing knowing that um then uh, then, you know, we can, we can focus on training our own inner worlds. We can, we can assess the people that we want to be and how we want to live and focus more on, on training our inner worlds, which is a difficult thing to do. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I, I've, I've been an incredible fuck up through much of my life. So I, I, I'm not, uh, I'm definitely not a motivational speaker and I, I definitely don't think that, uh, any, anyone should necessarily follow my example. Um, so, but, um, but I, I do think that, that in, in trying to learn more about the brain in perception and consciousness, um, psychedelics are an interesting inroad into all of this yeah i had a bunch of questions sent in and this one kind of relates to that like and it also kind of relates to a story you've told many times about when you were checked into the psych ward and you thought about writing down the ideas that you were you were getting and then i think you said you decided not to so that they couldn't see the information but then somebody that was there wrote the exact same thing that you were thinking yeah that's like the kind of shit that i hate sharing because because it's so fucking crazy it's going to make me seem insane and you know the basically i'm just like i must have been perceiving things wrong but yeah that's that's what i, I and actually another explanation is that is that a lot of crazy people are just automatically tapped into these same spaces and they actually didn't. So I had this idea of some like drawings and some formulas that I was seeing and I was gonna, I cleared off this board and I was going to write them all. And then I, I was, I didn't want to do that. And so, uh, cause I didn't want to look crazy. And so I went and took a nap and then all these crazy people like drew everything that I was, that I was just thinking about, but maybe they're just more experienced at uh at navigating these worlds and pulling from them in whatever conversations that we were having um you know when we were talking was um being interpreted in a similar um way you know uh, right. ju just uh, but i don't know i don't have a great explanation for that right was was it like a cohesive thought were you like once you were able to pass through the, 
I'm not sane stage of it. Like when you were sober, we'll say, did, did that information make any sense at all? No, I mean, I see some of the things that I'd written and stuff and, and, and I mean, I get what I was going for. Um, right. but I, I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, I took a break from looking at any of that stuff because it was triggering for me for a while. And that's why I haven't like written about it yet, but I'm, I'm now kind of ready to, um, right. But, uh, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't looked at a lot of that stuff in a few years. And, um, uh, when I, when I have the capacity to talk about it, um, I, I can, I can think of kind of some interesting, um, ideas about what all of that was, but I'm also just like a hair, a hair burnt out, uh, right, right. now. And, um, and 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 i don't i don't think i have the capacity um to break down uh all of consciousness and the, and the right. or, origins of thought at the moment um yeah but um but yeah maybe if we have another conversation another time and i'm uh, i'm i'm a little fresher we could get into it but it would take at least two hours to get into yeah no i definitely had similar experiences where like during I felt like I've been able to reduce the entire universe to a mathematical equation and like during it's almost felt like a 1950s telephone board where I can just unplug something and plug it into something else to make a different Mm -hmm. connection and like you said inside out where like emotions and feelings are personified it's just a it's an interesting like it's interesting to think you've got an answer and then to come out and for that to not make any sense, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I like you said, <laughs> we, yeah. we, we can talk about it another uh, time. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Another, another time, another time would be good. I'm just a, I'm just a hair preoccupied right now. And right. I, I don't, I'm going to need a nap here pretty soon. Well, we had one last question from uh, Sam, yeah. Sam Hudson. Maybe we can close on that. He was just wondering sure. if you had any advice to a younger psychonaut or some like just to stay grounded or stay real in their journeys? Well, I mean, hmm. the problem is, is like what works for me and what's going to work for other people is, is so tricky, but in terms of, in terms of um, psychonauts, I, I I would say one thing that I learned from my experience of when the one time that kind of things went south was that I was kind of too excitedly sharing like each of my perceptions and ideas as they were coming in. And I wish I could have had a little more self-control to sit back and reflect a little bit more. And um and and take some time to think things out because because all all of my ideas and perception at that time when they were just ideas that I was hashing out they were fine it was once I started like sharing them that I then and like people would be confused or they'd be hard to share or whatever and I'd be like oh no 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 I okay I mean this uh no no I mean that and and it was like there's something about sharing the idea that you have to like be a little careful about when you're in it because it it changes you you start second guessing yourself and then it changes your own perception of it and it's kind of like um in in the depths of those worlds it can it can get really confusing because there's have you ever played the game flux nope. um it's a board game where like each card changes what the rules of the game are and um and so you know you start with one game and then you play cards and the game has changed completely it's now a new game that you're playing and then you play a different card and someone else plays a different card and now like here this is how you win now and now uh, and now there's this new set of rules so each, each card is like a new rule um and um and in in those like most kind of manic or um psychedelic spaces 
um, I find that each time you're like saying something, like trying to close a loop and finish, um, finish a thought, it can be like, whatever you said at that time, that might've been true. Perception might've been, might've been that, and that might've been accurate until you put it down. And now that whole world has changed. And now there's a new set of, uh, of rules and perceptions that you're, uh, that you're having to navigate. And then you frantically play another card and then it changes faster and faster. And um, so, so I would just, you know, pay really close attention to integration and spacing out psychedelic experiences and making sure that not only do you have time um, to, to trip, but you have time to, to integrate. Um, and, you know, you have, you have the days following free as well. That is one good thing about hunker, being hunkered down right now is you might have five days free to focus on integration afterwards. Right. No, that's awesome. Um, well, man, seriously, thanks so much for doing this. This was, this was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks a lot, dude. I, I really appreciate it. It's been great. So you got, uh, you got some books coming, uh, secret project, the podcast. I have here a lot of are. secret projects. Yeah. So my podcast, I just started making it available on YouTube for the first time ever. Cause I, I just, I've been doing it for five and a half years. I did every single one in person and I did it right. audio only. Now I'm now I'm putting things on uh, on YouTube so people can check um, check me out visually um, too, as well as my guests. And then also I'm um, I'm uh, I'm oh I have my documentary. If people are interested in the subject, I have my documentary Psychonautics, a comics exploration of psychedelics. I'm final. I just downloaded Instagram on my phone in like November and reluctantly was starting to do it. <laughs> and, and now I'm starting to Instagram a bunch and, and answer questions like this for people and, and do videos and things. Everything's going digital. So I'm going digital as well. And so there, there's going to be at a, at a time when everyone's very hungry for content. I'm, uh, I'm happy to provide it. I have, uh, I have endless amounts of content for people. Perfect. So, so Twitter, yeah. you're at Shane comedy, yep. Instagram, Instagram, Shane Moss comedy. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. And psychonautics and all the projects. Thanks. A lot yeah, for psychonautics is, uh, is available on Amazon prime for free. Perfect. Awesome. All right. on man. Thanks for being on living the dream. And, uh, I guess we're kind of living in a dream right now, but, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we come out Your through dream. on the other end <laughs> yeah thanks a lot for having me man thanks for doing it take care all right appreciate it cheers